this is so slow. Zero to 60 in 13.74 seconds was, uh, was what we just did. Keegan the vlog here. Welcome to a tangent episode of TR3 Wrench. Uh, today we're in the Volkswagen and we are continuing a project that we started way back in the springtime. This car we did oil seals on and we were successful in stopping motor oil leaking. However, we did not address a leaky diesel injection pump. So what we have done is uh, purchased one of the Giles pumps uh, from out of Canada that are a performance pump. And we're gonna fit that to the car today. First, we're gonna do some performance testing, some benchmark testing, zero to 40 if the software allows us to do that. Uh, otherwise, zero to 60, it's just gonna take a little bit longer to do zero to 60 because this car is really slow. We're gonna change, change the uh, diesel injection pump out and we're gonna go see what kind of performance increase we get out of the modified diesel injection pump. Okay, before we get any further into this video, let me explain to you the method we are using to do these time trials. Uh, the numbers that you're seeing and that I'm saying are not actually the time clock, uh, zero to 60 numbers. Um, 14 seconds for a normally aspirated VW diesel uh, from the 80s is not possible without heavy modifications. So uh, what we're using is an app called Race Buddy, and uh, it has two modes. One of the modes, the preferred mode that you get accurate data out of, is by connecting to the onboard diagnostic port uh, and reading the speed from the computer of the car. This car doesn't have a computer. So the only option we have available to us to do these stop starts, other than having somebody with a stopwatch, which eh, we don't want to get into that, uh, is using the iPhone's accelerometer and GPS. So what I've determined is it looks like this, this software, when it is in that mode, it makes some assumptions based on the very, uh, very first few bits of information that it gets, um, a small sample size, for, if you will. Uh, this car actually has pretty decent pull for about a second and a half, and then you're out of the power van. One thing that I did after the fact was go back into the footage um, and use the, uh, the time of the video itself, uh, saying mark when I started and then saying 60 when I hit 60, to actually get um, the, the clock time. And I did that for a couple of the runs and came up with an approximate 14, somewhere between 14 and 15 second differential between what the software reads and the actual clock time. So, so the zero to 60, that first run where it said it was about 14 seconds was actually closer to 30 seconds uh, on the clock to get to 60 miles per hour, which makes sense for a normally aspirated four-cylinder tiny displacement diesel engine from the 1980s. So with that said, let's get back to the Jetta. Wow. First thing we're gonna do is head to the shop and deal with axles. Uh, we've got the failed CV joint, uh, clunking sounds and, and that kind of stuff when, when, turning, when turning, turning the car. So uh, we've got new axles to put in. We're gonna go ahead and put those in. We're gonna do some time trials on the current pump and then we're gonna swap out the pump and we're gonna do time trials again and see what we get. So here we go. Okay, so on this side, I do not believe it's possible to clear for 
this side of the axle to clear the transmission and the subframe. So I'm gonna try another trick that I saw, which is to remove these two bolts here and pull this assembly just far enough out of the way to get it out, slide it out the front. Before we go any further, let's verify we've got the right part. Here's the old one that came out. The new one, the flange looks like it's the same size. The bolt patterns are the same. And the splines are, the splines look like they are the same count. The old axle nut. Yep, so that's the same. I take all that old grease out, put some new grease in. Okay, we are heading back out to General's Highway to uh, do some time trials here. So um, we got the we got the axles all swapped out. No more clunking sounds. Steering actually steering feels a little bit better too. Uh, so there was at least at least one of those axles was in pretty bad shape. All right, I think we've got enough testing done. Uh, let's go back and get uh, get to work on the injection pump. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is assemble the special tools we need for this job. We've got a uh, sprocket puller, dial indicator to time the pump, some, uh, some bits to, to hold the, uh, the whole engine in correct timing when we take this thing apart. So, uh, so we're, gonna, we're gonna gather those tools up and, uh, and then also get the manual out and make sure we know what we're doing. Okay, here are our, uh, our diesel tools from Metal Nerd. Uh, we do need this to loosen the tension on the timing belt. 
Uh, we need this to bust the sprocket off of the old pump. Um, we need this to lock the, we got two of, the, two of those guys, and uh, we need this to lock the cam in place. We may need this to bust loose the, uh, the sprocket for the injection pump, so we'll go ahead and get that out. Here are our special tools that we're gonna need for this job. Also, we've got our trusty, trusty shop manual here. So, diesel fuel system. Removing and installing injection pump. That is what we're doing. So number one, remove the camshaft drive belt as described in 5.4. So we need to go through that procedure. We got the crank at top dead center. We've got cylinder number one. Cylinder number one at top dead center. Both cam lobes are pointing up. And our lock bar is horizontal. And that pretty much lines up dead on with the witness marks that we put on here the last time we did it. The IP is out. Look at all that fuel down there. It's all diesel fuel. It's really, really wet with diesel fuel down here. So it's a good thing we are getting this out and replaced. The leak is obviously getting worse. Here it is. Here's the back side of it that you don't see. It looks like that looks like a big part of the leak right there is is uh the arm for the cold start assist. Uh, definitely looks like it's leaking a little bit out of the main shaft. We got that out and uh, it's time to get going on installing the new one. So the cam belt is back on exactly. Exactly how it came off. Never came off the sprocket down here. The sprocket. So we're gonna put a little tension on it. Not too tight. It's actually pretty tight without even without anything on the tensioner, but uh, we're going to tighten that up just a little bit. Lost my uh, battery on the GoPro here, so we're on the iPhone. And uh, what I've done is we're still at top dead center. Uh, Giles wants this pump set at 9.5, so there we are, and I'm just going to get ready to, to torque these bolts back down on this, and uh, we're, getting, we're getting darn close to a start here. I still have to hook up the throttle. I've got the bracket outside painting, get, just painting it because it was rusty and, and nasty and whatnot, so we'll get that on there. We may, uh, we may knock this off and uh, pick it up on Friday.
one more broken leg. Yeah, okay. You can get something very quickly, I would think. Just a couple things to do under here. Note, this return line here is too taut. Uh, with the geometry of where this plug sits into, this is the return uh, plug, where this sits into the pump, um, it can't rotate to give this slack uh, because of the, the idle stop screw. I've got a, a roll of this braided fuel hose return line coming and what we're going to do is turn this whole thing just a little bit this way plenty of plenty of reach on this and uh we're going to bring this return line around and and get that from this is this is too tight that's not that's not good one other little gotcha here on the vacuum pump uh so the, new, the old pump was connected by vacuum here and this plugged into the old pump and then this plugged into this canister, this reserve canister here. We took that out because this pump does not require that, does not have the provisions for it. Uh, so you gotta have a little, little rubber stopper thing to plug up that vacuum port. So that's pretty much it for the install. Okay, we're out of the shop and ready to see what this performance increase is like. I can already tell you the car feels a little bit more responsive. It's not drastic, but it is definitely observable. So what we're gonna do is head back to the place where we got our worst time, the uh, almost 14 seconds. And uh, we're gonna take off from a dead stop there and see what we get. Okay, that's gonna do it for this tangent episode of TR3 Wrench. Uh, we definitely saw an improvement in the performance of the diesel with the uh, new performance injection pump. Thank you to Giles for, uh, for building it. And also a really big thank you to Giles for being on hot standby tech support. Uh, so I bought this pump three months ago or so and it's been sitting on the shelf. And uh, the day I decided to uh, do this project, had a little bit of confusion as far as where the ports were and it didn't quite look exactly the same. So I snapped a photo of it the day before Thanksgiving, at least Thanksgiving here in the States and uh, shot it to Giles. And within five minutes, I had technical information about how to hook this thing up and reassurance that it was in fact the right pump. He knew exactly which one I had before. Uh, and this is a direct bolt up replacement. So huge, huge thank you. I cannot say enough good things about Giles and his shop and his product. If you've got one of these Mark IIs and you want a decent performance increase, this is probably the best thing you can do to a normally aspirated diesel to uh, to make it more drivable. So, uh, so thank you for watching and uh, we're gonna get back to the Triumph and tearing into the transmission next. 
Uh, so more to come on that. And uh, like and subscribe. We'll see you next time right here on TR3 Wrench Time.